as has been my custom, I, I take a break from the drawing, I come back and I want to clean up a few things. Um, so we're still in our shadow ground and a lot, some of this got a little too active for me. So I'm going to choose the selection tool freehand. I'll choose it in color fill. I'll turn off color fill, I should say. And I'm going to remove this. I find this branch a little busy. But either that or maybe what I'll do is I'll remove some of this um, some of this tree ball here, okay? So I'll tap that over and come back between those two. Three fingers swipe and cut. And that's a little better, I think. Okay, so now let's go to... Oh, I also want to change... <laughs> sorry about that. I want to make this a little more green, uh, I realize. So... Um, I'm going to just sweeten the shadow a little bit, okay? And I'm I'm, adopt, I'm changing the hue. I'm in that layer, and I just, I want it to be that juicy spring day where the leaves are first coming out. So I'm going to make that just a little, a little greener, all right? And uh, it still has some of its violet in it when it gets to the wall. So there's that. Now, let's go to these fantastic tree trunks and as you know shadows are always above the thing that's being shadowed and it's always in multiply blend mode and it starts often as the same color as the thing you're throwing a shadow against so what we're going to do here is we're going to pick up that color of the trunks again i'm going to tap the paintbrush i'm going to go over to the eyedropper and I'm going to drag it to that trunk like that. And now that color is selected. So that's going to be my beginning, my base holder color. Okay. And now I am going to go back to the layer menu, add a layer above. This will be shadows trunk. Shadows trunk this time. Okay. So we don't lose track of that. And we'll go to multiply blend mode. And now we will start to imagine how the shadows of branches and tree balls in the foreground are affecting these trunks, okay? So we'll start here. Now this one's sitting in the midst of a tree, so I'm gonna come up with this shadow and I'll come up the side. First of all, I have to pick my freehand and make sure color fill is activated. And now I'm going to come up and sort of start that first ellipse here. And I'll make a little patch of sun there. And I'll come down here and finish that up. Now I should have, I didn't account for that grass. So let me do that. I'll come down here. I think I'll start up higher, by the way. I don't know that I liked that one. And I'll just imagine that a, a branch is casting a shadow over that. And now I'll do some leaves that are casting a shadow over. Okay. And again, I'm making these fractal gestures, fractal shapes come across. And a thin branch comes across. And another thin branch comes across. And now some trees, some leaves throw shadow and a little patch there and back up and a larger patch and back up and I've kind of lost track where I am so here we go I'll bring it back down and there is that so I'll test that and it's not too bad it's a little busy I'm going to get rid of the one that I did at the base so I'll go to the eraser which is my favorite flat marker mode and I'll get rid of that one and actually that looks a little busy too. So, and that looks a little busy too. So I'll start there. How about that? And I'm going to add to this. I'm going to, I'm going to say also that the, the sliver of this tree is always in shadow back here. Just this little thin strip. Okay. Goes up and down the tree. And now we have, and it looks like the sun is predominantly from this side. Okay, and um, I don't necessarily like all that, but let's, let's try and be a little more fluid this time, okay? 
So this one is next. I'll come down and I'll just do the top of the tree like we talked about. And now I'll make some of these, I'll make the tree's branches itself cast some of these shadows, okay? And this tree, on this tree, the right side of the tree will have that thin shadow. Okay, so there's that. And these branches will cast very thin shadows down that way. Okay, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. So we'll turn that that. And that's interesting, not too bad. And I forgot that this tree has a branch that comes up here, so we'll, we'll address that branch. We'll say that that branch is mostly in shadow, but has a moment or two where some sunshine breaks over it. And then it's in shadow behind its own tree like that, okay? And then we'll add this shadow of this branch. And again, I'm using the shadow to shape the branch. See how I'm running making little circles with that, that shape the branch, okay? And it'll have that trail off by itself. And let's see how that looks. That's kind of fun, right? When you see that. Now there's this next big one back here. And these, as we go back further, we can simplify these shadows. We don't need to get quite so fussy. So I'll just do this in two big moves. And this one I'll do one or two big moves and take it up there and again the idea is you you don't have to stay perfectly between the lines it's not about it's not about between the lines it's about the overall energy created by this looseness that you're using okay so there's that one and i'll come back i'm not even sure this is the right color for these shadows but I'm not too worried about that right now. Now let's bring these down. Let's say that these are almost entirely in shadow because they're back there in the main part of the woods. I'll give one little patch of light on this one and come back up and do that. You can see that effect. And then here's the conifer that's back there. And I'll have this one crisscrossed by its own pine boughs throwing shadow. This one's way up there, almost entirely in shadow. And add some darkness to that and to that. Very often you have to end these selections with a, a tap to make sure you've got it all, like you hear that. And let's see, let's go up here and let's pretend there's another secondary branch up there and we'll come back down and still making those little tiny circular gestures back there to help shape these tree trunks and shape these branches okay and there we go I'll turn those off and yeah I just I just love this effect of light Okay, we're almost done. And let's go up here and grab that. Hopefully you're all practicing this with me. Um, this one, oh, now here, this is good. I always like this part. When we get to this side of the forest, more of the back of these trees will be in, in shade because they're, they're turned at more of an angle to the sun, right? So the sun's coming from here over here, it's coming straight from behind us, so they're like fully frontally lit. But over here, the sun's coming from this side of them, so more half the tree is in shadow. And um, that helps you, again, create a sense of depth and create um, kind of a trick the brain. And again, thinking that this thing is uh, realer than it is. Not to mention just being charming to do these whole hand sketches, right? Okay, so again, this tree, half of it will be in shadow. So I'll just come down. Hmm, what am I doing? I'll just come down that side right away 
because I know that whole thing will be dark. And then as I go up, I'll make these playful little loops that are, that are the parts that are in shadow from the tree ball and from the other branches of this tree. And let's see how this works out. And again, those, those will, I'm making these slight curved gestures. And let's see if that was successful, right? Not too bad. And let's finish up now with these big guys here. And we'll come down. And this whole thing will be, almost this whole thing will be in shadow. Let's say that that branch has got a little part at the top where the light still hits it. Down we come. And this one will... You can also wiggle as you go up to imply that there are big knots in the tree. Um, squirrels, nests, and that kind of thing. Okay, and there's that. Turn that off so you can see that. And let's finish these last couple. And I'll come all the way down again because it'll all be in shade in this back half. I'll come up here. You can see how that kind of works nice when I wiggle there. I'll wiggle again. I'll make a few brush or branch shadows. And here can be some foliage. But I was going back to that halfway point. So the rest of the tree is in shade. And there's that. And we're almost done. Come down. And obviously, you don't have to be using all these lessons for architectural rendering. You can go do sketching and painting because these are really, these are really um, rendering principles that I developed most of these, at least the ones that have to do with light, I developed uh, while I was learning to watercolor. And, um, okay, just one more dramatic one here. So these will, these will help you whether you're doing charcoal or your own projects and you don't even have to be um, a practicing architect to hopefully get benefit out of this. Okay. So there we have, let's see, are we almost done? I promised you, um, anyone that wants to be done by all means, <laughs> you are done. You have my blessing, but I did promise you, we would also do, um, some, something subtle about the way that shadows travel across the house. These shadows as they come up, will also shade the house. So that'll be our last part. And then um, our last part about shadows, and then we'll do one last thing about textures, and we'll be um, we'll be done with the simple, not so simple maybe, but we'll be done with the two-hour how to do a rendering in two hours part of this course. So we'll come right back, and we'll do the shadow across this house. <laughs>